Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. Now, I can go and, in theory, set some course play courses to do this, and I'm, more and more of you are asking me to use course play. So maybe we could try using course play to do a little bit so that we could do some bailing as well. My only sort of issue with that, I, I, well I don't know. What's course play like for uh, avoiding bales? Uh, if I set course play to go and rake something up and then do the baling, is it is it going to avoid the bales or is it going to drive over all of the bales? What's it like for that? So I don't really know on that one. So I'm going to try on the big, just the big field. I'm going to try doing a little bit of course play. Maybe we can set something up. Right, this action cannot be performed, so I'm going to take that last 500 litres of oats and go and put them back, like this. And that is now the horses. They've got everything that they need in there. We've got the groom mod taking care of the daily exercise for the horses, so we don't need to do anything else with them. And then the rest of it is taken care of with everything else. Right, let's dump that lot out there, like that. This one can then go and be parked up, and we will get our Sour Skittles tractor, and we will put that one onto the rake, which is over in the shed over there, and then we can get started. And we will see if we can get course play to set up a course for the big field. I'm going to do the small field first, just run around that one, that will be nice and quick and easy. And... And once I've done that, once the, the little field over that side, once I've done that one, then we'll have a look at course play doing the big field so that maybe we can have course play doing the bailing in that field. Because that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at doing is um, if we can have course play doing the bailing in that field, uh, that is something that I think could be pretty good. But wh whether or not it actually works, I don't really know. We'll, we'll have to sort of watch and see. So let's hook this one on first. Bring it out here. We want to go out this way. Now, we've got fence all around the farm here, and we're not going to be able to get rid of this fence, but we're going to want another cattle pen, and that's going to go out here. Uh, I'm looking at this. I don't know whether I should put it in front of the cattle over there. Like, if we have a look here a minute. Right, we can either put it here, right next to where we are at the moment, or put it over this side. And then just kind of pave over that bit. I'm thinking up here might be better. Because then we're, we're sort of closer to where the hay and everything is. I don't know. I don't really, I, I, I really don't know with that one. That one's a little bit of a, a, a tricky situation to figure out. I, I genuinely have no idea on that one at the moment. Now... We'll open this one out, we will go around and we will do the outside round and then we will do some land work and start doing that, like this. What I would like to do is I'd like to test the new Quadrant Baler that is with the class pack. So we will do that. I want to check, most importantly, the width of the baler. How wide is that baler on the pickup? Because we know that the base game uh crone one that we is it no it's not crone um the base game uh coon is it is it coon i think it's a coon one um whichever uh the, the base game one that we use we know has got a really nice wide pickup on the front of it it's wide the, the actual working width on the front is wider than the visual pickup width and that works well because it means that when you've got um, uneven windrows that have been left because of, you know, poor, the slightly poor game mechanics on the windrows, you haven't, like, the, the, the issue then is, like, the, the issue with the windrows is, is all sort of overwritten, right? It, it's no longer an issue because of the fact that you've got um, the, the wide pickup reel is, is sort of, removing that whole thing as an issue and that's what i'd like to be able to do well i'm hoping the quadrant will do um, i'm hoping that we can use that one and it will have a nice wide pickup on it 
and then we don't have to worry about any issues with pickups being too narrow or anything like that because most of the modded ones well every modded one that you pick up every single modded baler that i've tried so far the pickup on the front the actual working width of it they always seem to try to put it inside the actual width of the baler now i've, I've, I've gone on about this plenty of times before so you all know my thoughts on this at the moment um when a game mechanic stops you from being able to row up the stuff properly, then you need to have another mechanic to combat that. You don't want to have a game mechanic that is unrealistic by spreading out the material wider than it should be, and then combat that by having a super realistic baler that doesn't go out wider than it should in order to pick that bit up. Because all you do is you're left with loads and loads of little bits all over the field, that is really unrealistic and you've then got two choices you can either do the unrealistic thing of having to go back over the entire field and pick up all of the little bits um which if a farmer was leaving that he would take steps to go and make sure that he wasn't leaving that in the first place or you can do the highly unrealistic thing of leave all of those bits all over the field which not many farmers in my experience would go and do that either they wouldn't go and leave loads and loads of little bits all over the field unless they had a lot of livestock in which case they may consider it and put the livestock in the field immediately afterwards because the first thing the livestock would do is go around and pick up all of those bits and clean it all up so it wouldn't exactly go to waste but it's still not something that you'd want to do we're going to see if i can puzzle out how to do a course play course so we go here we've got course play control this is course play, start course, recording, copy course. Uh, down here I've got field work. Right here I've got manage courses, speed limits, settings, general drive settings. Refill, fuel save option. No, I don't want any of those. Okay, so I go back to this one. Then I switch to field work down here. And start course recording, copy course course generation calculate current fields edge path okay that's the very outside edge of the field right there okay so then i assume field edge path number i don't know what that means i've got no clue what that means this is what i don't like about course play yes course play is great once somebody has come along and explained everything about it but if you haven't had someone come along and explain everything about it, it's it nothing makes sense. There's no tooltips telling me anything about it. Um, it becomes a lot more complicated. Okay, advanced course settings. Currently loaded course field edge path. Current vehicle position. Okay, we do that. Headland. I want a headland. I want two headland passes going clockwise headland corners we'll go for smooth field center up down experimental and we'll just go up and down multiple tools okay we've only got the one tool so we don't want any more than that um we don't need to say anything else about that we've got a 19 meter working width that's fine bypass islands i've got no islands i don't need to worry about that starting direction automatic yeah skip rows I don't want to do that either. Generate field court. Couldn't generate course. Try changing the settings or move. What? Okay, so we can't generate the course. Oh, hang on a minute. Course generation. Starting position current. Southwest. Northwest. Northeast. Southeast. Let's go to the southwest corner. Select position on map. Southwest. Okay, so we'll try starting location southwest down there. Generate. Well, that doesn't work either. So what have I done wrong? I've got an edge path calculated. Let me try backing up a bit. So that I'm out the way. I'll do, I'll do that. But uh, I, I don't think it likes the edge path or something. Um, 
Let's go back to here. Field edge path. Copy course. Start recording. Edge path number. I See, I don't know what that is. Leveling and compacting. Transfer drive. Now, what about you? Lane offset. Symmetric lane change. Turn on field path finding. Opposite turn direction. Turning circle, auto, 13, working width, 19, vehicle convoy, no. And I'm looking in here, and I've got an edge. It's calculated the edge of the field. I thought that's what it was supposed to do. Field edge path number. Add field one's edge path Okay, I don't want that. Course generation. Okay. Headland passes. Starting location. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the southwest. I've moved the tractor, so maybe it needed me to move the tractor. Multiple tools. I've got one tool on there. Uh, skip rows that I want. Bypass. Headlands. Generate field course. I moved the tractor. Try changing the settings or moving the vehicle. Doesn't like that. Right. Okay, so course play is completely useless and doesn't work. Um, how do I clear everything? There's, there's got to be a way to just rem d delete everything. Okay, I've removed the calculate current field's edge path. And I'm just going to click on generation here and I'll see if that will do it. Maybe it will do it without having that bit. Um, field edge path currently loaded course. That's all I've got. Couldn't generate. I have come to the inevitable conclusion that course play doesn't work. Doesn't like this. I don't know why, but it doesn't like it for any reason whatsoever. So, yes, uh, unless you have a degree in computer programming or you've got several hours to go and get somebody else to show you how to do it course play is completely and utterly useless i've said this before and i will say it again i'm sure it's a wonderful tool but because you cannot puzzle your way through the thing and figure it out and nothing in it is actually straightforward um it, it renders it useless it's that it, it, it just doesn't fit like it it's not fit for purpose it doesn't do what you want it to do and yeah i'm really sorry to the people who spend a lot of time making it i'm i'm sure that um it does have its uses but i cannot get on board with a mob that requires so much tuition in order to be able to use it i don't want to spend hours and hours and hours having to learn how to program it um, I, I want to be able to go into a mod and just have a few tooltips show me what I need to do in order to be able to use it. It's that easy, right? That's, that's all I'm asking for is, oh, you want to do that? Right, well, just do this. And then you mouse over something and it says, this does this, right? This does this bit here. If you want to generate a course in a field, you don't just have to randomly mash buttons and guess your way through it. It will say... Do this, do this, and do this, and then you have a course loaded, right? It says, do I want to generate the edge of the field? Okay, well, I'll do that, and it tells me, no, nope, well, you've done that, but too bad, because we're not going to use it to generate a field course. Generate field course. It would make a bit of sense that generate field course, just by the name, the clues in the name, okay, will generate a field course, but it won't let me generate a field course. It doesn't do it. I'm missing something out. There's an ingredient there that is not present where it should be. And yes, I am absolutely certain that there are people who know how to use it who are saying, well, you just need to do this. It's, it's obvious. It's not obvious. It's absolutely not obvious at all. There is nothing anywhere in the description of the mod that tells me how to use it. Therefore there is a serious failing with the mod. And, yep, I'm sure that there are those of you who absolutely loathe and detest that I don't like the mod at all. Um, but that's that's my reason for not liking it, is 
there is nothing anywhere to tell me where I'm going wrong with it and how I can do it correctly. And that, to me, it just... Uh, what, what's the point in using the mod when I'm unable to use the mod? Seriously, that's, that, that is um, a serious question. What is the point in me spending a load of time and energy trying to figure out how to use the mod when there is absolutely nothing to indicate whether I'm getting it right or I'm getting it wrong? Um, yes... I know there are lots and lots of videos of tutorials on how to do it, but I don't want to sit and watch lots and lots of tutorials and videos on how to do something. I want to be able to look at it and puzzle it out. That's part of the, the good things about gaming. If you have any game, and if, if you go to a new game, and you go to start playing that game and there is nothing in that game that teaches you how to play it, that teaches you the basics of it. And the only possible way that you can figure out how to play that game is to go away from the game and get a load of tutorials that someone else has gone and done and then use those tutorials to puzzle out how to actually play the game. You're going to give it a bad review. You're going to say, no, this game is rubbish. This, it, it, that's the sort of thing that should be included with the game. That's what I'm saying with this, this, this mod. I look at a mod as the same as I would with any game. If I was reviewing a game and it was too complicated for me to be able to figure it out and there was absolutely nothing in the game that indicated to me how I was supposed to do things, then if it was an early access game, I would really hope that that would, you know, I'd write that off as a bug as stuff still to be done. Incomplete game that still had a load of work need doing to it. Uh, so that people could actually be able to play the game. If that was in a final release game, I wouldn't do videos on it. I would simply write it off as a really, really terrible, awful game. And I wouldn't make videos on the game. I would just discard it and look, move to somewhere else. And that's how I feel about um, course play, is the complexity of using course play. And there is absolutely nothing anywhere within the mod, within the game, that shows me how to use it. There's nothing at all. I've just gone through the steps that would make sense. A load of course, generate the field edge, uh, course generation. There is nothing anywhere to indicate what I'm doing wrong. And yeah, I, I appreciate I'm doing something wrong and quite possibly after someone externally has shown me how to do it, it'll probably be something relatively straightforward. Knowing me, it's probably something really straightforward. But that still doesn't get away from the fact that uh, I've got no indication in game as to what I'm supposed to do in order to get it right. And that is one of the big, big things that I don't like about it. So there. Um, I've, I've, I've tried again, and I haven't been able to do it. I will keep trying different things with course play, but so far it's proved to be a, 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 rather, disapp a rather disappointing sort of failure. We, we, we've managed to do some bits. I have managed to manually create a field edge to a field that didn't actually exist, and I set a course with it, and we got the field mode over there. We, we did the mowing on the field over there. That worked. That worked actually really well. I was, I was quite pleased with that. Um, that was straightforward and it worked. This bit here, this didn't work. I did, I, I, fo I followed the footsteps. I generated a field course. I tried it without the field edge being marked. I tried it with the field edge being marked. Nothing. There's nothing coming up whatsoever. So I don't really know what I'm supposed to do differently on that one. Just trying to decide if I should just keep going like this with my straight lines or if I should turn around and start just moving up and down the field a little bit. I'm thinking actually I'm just going to leave it like this because there's not going to be all that many runs up and down. So we'll keep the lines going straight. And then we've got one more pass around the outside edge of the field. I mean this field's not all that big anyway. I'm wondering if maybe that's why it didn't like it because of the, the big width of this particular machine and the small size of the field, although I don't think that would do it. But I, I don't really know. I, I, to be honest, I, I, I really don't know. But um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to find out exactly why. And I know that there are going to be people who will be able to tell me exactly why it didn't work this time, what I did wrong. Um, same as 
normally when I do it, that there are people who are able to tell me exactly what I was doing wrong and why it didn't work. Um, but that's going back to my complaint is it shouldn't have to be like that if this was like i look at a really complex mod like seasons or like course play or something like that i i look at that as though it's a completely different game because when you're using it it is essentially a completely different game that you're playing isn't it um so many people tell me oh it's a completely different game when you're using that completely different game when you're using seasons um for the most part seasons does explain it in game Right, there are tooltips and there are various bits around, and Seasons does explain itself. Um, it does it a lot better now than it used to. That was one of the bigger complaints that was with Seasons to start off with, and they've done a lot of work with that. They've added in a whole load of stuff um, to explain why and how to do things um, in the game using Seasons. And that's absolutely brilliant. But, you know, if, if I, th with course play, there is no such thing. There is, yeah, I get a lot of people telling me it's, it's so wonderful because it will completely change your game. Right, well, that's great. Let's completely change my game, but tell me how to do it. If I'm playing a new game, I want instructions on how to play my new game. And I don't want those instructions to be on some obscure video somewhere. I want those instructions to be in the game. I want to be actually able to play said game from within the game. Um... I've played some pretty complicated games. Um, those of you who've ever played EVE Online, I'm sure you probably agree that EVE Online is one of those games that has got a particularly steep learning curve. It's always had a steep learning curve. I've played EVE Online for a very long time. I, I take long, long breaks from it. Um, but I always end up going back and having another go every now and then. Um, and right from the very beginning, when I first started playing that game, it was a very steep learning curve. It was a difficult game to sort of puzzle your way through, but there were still tooltips in it. Even when it was at its most difficult many years ago, there were still tooltips there. There was It still explained how to play the game from within the game. And it wasn't very obvious. It wasn't at all obvious for large chunks of it. Um, but it was still there. It was the, the tuition and everything was still there. You were still able to figure your way through the game um, and get to what you needed to do. And I mean, I'll be honest, one of the things that really sold me on that game was I started playing it and I, I went through the tutorial sort of stuff and I, I got my, my first few things and started to make a little bit of money. Um, just in in the starting area, and I was thinking, I'm doing really well here, this is really good. And so then I went to, now, it, those of you who aren't familiar with EVE Online, um, you've basically got a, a massive great big galaxy, and you can just go from one star system to the next star system um, through jump gates. And then you explore each star system as you go along, and there's various different things you can do in each of them. Um, but each star system has got a security rating. And if it's a secu security rating of 0 0.5 or higher, there is a local police force known as Concord. Concord, to a certain extent, not guaranteed, but to a certain extent, will help to keep you safe. Uh, if you go in a uh, security area of 0 0.4 or lower, which is low security space, or null security, which is 0, 0.0, um, then Concord isn't there, and so other Capsuleers, that is the name of the players, you're, you're a Capsuleer, um, they are free to engage you without getting any consequences. So they can go along and they can blow you up, and they can steal all of your stuff. Now you don't get, as in so many other games, you don't respawn with all of your belongings in your bag, okay? And the general rule of thumb in EVE Online is if you can't afford to lose it, then don't fly with it. And that, that, is, the, the, that is the absolute golden rule for EVE Online. If you can't afford to lose it, then don't fly with it. Um, serious golden rule. So I didn't know about the golden rule, but I went to... to I, I, I wanted to move. I wanted to move house. I was in the, um, the starting area, and I decided, right, you know what? I'm going to pack all my belongings into my industrial ship 
which was a bad move to start with. I had a few blueprints and a few other things. I thought I was doing well. I was actually, you know, I hardly had um, two pennies to rub together, but I thought that I was doing reasonably well. And I went and loaded up all of my belongings. So I loaded up everything I owned, literally everything. I didn't have anything spare whatsoever. I took the whole lot and I decided I was going to go, th you know, I had two choices that so I'd already picked out the destination of where I wanted to go and set up my new base. And I had two choices. I could go through high security space and be reasonably safe, um, which was 20 jumps, which does take a little while to do. Or I could take a shortcut through two low security systems and um, get there in three jumps. That's all it would have taken was three jumps. A lot, lot faster, and I thought, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be fine. I'll just jump through there. Um, so I jumped through. The first one was fine. The second one, as soon as I um, jumped through, somebody latched onto me and blew me up. And then uh, that, that was it. I lost absolutely everything. Everything that was in that ship was destroyed or stolen by the person that blew me up, and there was absolutely nothing that I could do about it. There was nothing whatsoever that I could do about it. I lost everything I owned, and then I was put back to a station with a rookie starting ship, and that was that. And before I jumped through into the low security area, you do get a warning that comes up and says, if you go through here, the police cannot protect you. You are fair game to any other player. You absolutely certain that you want to do this. So... Even though EVE Online is a brutal and savage environment where you can literally lose everything if you do something daft, like load everything you own onto a ship and then jump into low security space like I did, um, it still warns you, it still tells you, it still explains to you as you go along what you're doing and also says to you, um, just a minute. Are you absolutely certain that you want to do this? And it does remind you that if you lose things in combat, you don't get them back. You don't, they don't respawn with you or anything like that. So the game does tell you, in no uncertain terms, exactly what happens. All of it. It, it explains a whole lot. Which is something, and you know, this is, it's taken me a while to get to this point, but this is something course play doesn't do. Course play does not tell you that you're about to get blown up and you're going to lose everything. Right? Courseplay wouldn't do that. Courseplay would be EVE Online without the tutorials. Courseplay is Dark Souls. That's what it is. Courseplay is Dark Souls without any kind of tutorial whatsoever. And you never, ever, ever having played any kind of RPG game before either. So you really have no clue what an RPG is. You don't know which end of the sword to hold. And then you're thrown into Dark Souls. That's what Courseplay is. And for those of you who are not familiar with what Dark Souls is, just go and have a look at a few of the memes. Dark Souls is considered to be one of the most difficult RPG games in existence, and it does not hold your hand. It does not hold your hand at all. Um, most games, you, you sort of learn, and after you, you get to, like, level 20 or something, you, you've at least figured out how not to die. Uh, Dark Souls, you, you start off dying really quickly. Uh, when you get to level 20... You still die, but you might die with slightly shinier armor. That's that's essentially it. Uh, Dark Souls is probably one of, if not the, most difficult RPG game you will ever play. It's called Dark Souls for a reason. Okay? It's, it's, it's dark. It's dangerous. And it makes grown men cry. So, um... Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.